Well, you know, the verse I gave at the beginning of my message was from Paul's writings. Everything must be tested. Hold fast to that which is uh, good. And he's referring to those things that we can put to the test. And, uh, you know, there are areas and things that are mentioned in the Bible that can't be put to direct testing. Uh, but as a scientist, I'm prepared to believe what it says because the Bible has proven itself so utterly trustworthy in every area I can put it to the test. And if you want a specific example, uh, you know, I can't prove that uh, the water at the wedding feast at Cana was transformed into wine. Uh, they drank it all, so it's not around to, <laughs> to be found. And, uh, you know, I can't, as a scientist, uh, figure out exactly uh, how Jesus transformed the water into wine. It's all gone. Uh, but the fact that there's so many other miracles described in the Bible that we can put to a rigorous scientific testing causes me to believe, yes, that really did happen. I believe what is recorded in the Gospel of John uh, about the wedding feast. And on that basis, I'm prepared to believe what we find in the last creation account of the Bible. Namely, that this isn't the only universe that God has created. He has created a new heavens and a new earth, radically different from this one with conditions that we can't possibly put to the test today. However, we can test it in one way. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow, how we can put it to the test and show that it's true. But in terms of testing the actual conditions in the new creation, no. Uh, we take God at his word, but I'm prepared to take God at his word because everywhere I can put it to the test, it's proven itself to be utterly reliable in ways that are so amazing, I'm forced to conclude that this is inspired and inerrant, the perfect, trustworthy word of God. Right. <clears throat> you know, Hugh, I've noticed that as a number of different people go through different phases in their spiritual journey, there's different, uh, what I call, enough levels of evidence that they need. There's some folks who don't need too much evidence and they have a high capacity for faith. There's other people that seem to have a real high need for evidence and lower ability to make those leaps of faith. Could you speak just to a minute for those people who say, you know, my enough level is pretty high. I need to have a lot of evidence before I'm willing to make that step. What kind of key steps would you say are a great way to move forward in testing things out and checking their spiritual journey? Well, that's a good question, Mark, and I was that kind of individual. It took me two years of study, and I studied about an hour to two hours a day mm -hmm. for two years, never missed a day. That's what it took for me to make that step. But I think one reason why it took that much for me is I was surrounded by peers, students and uh, um, professors at the University of British Columbia that were very skeptical about anything Christian, yeah. and they had all these tough questions, and I knew that I couldn't live my Christian life in front of them unless I could deal with the objections and the questions they put forward. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I was doing over that two-year period was preparing myself to deal with their issues. And one of the things I've learned as a president of Reasons to Believe is when I see someone needing a whole lot of evidence, I just kind of step in and say, what kind of questions are you facing at work? Mm -hmm. And to deal with it at that level. Because often what you discover is you're dealing with a person that really is quite receptive, mm -hmm. but they want to be prepared. And they're not about to make a public commitment until they're prepared. And frankly, I just kind of treat that as advanced discipleship. Mm -hmm. you know, let's get them ready in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't worry about the eventual income. I know they're on the right path. And it's a good thing to give them lots of advanced preparation before they make that public commitment, because when they do, you know they're going to be very effective. Fantastic. So go on the journey, ask the questions, read the books, dig as deep as you can, because the evidence really is out there. I want people to take whatever time they need. Mm -hmm.